The question is that the motion be agreed to. I call Claire Curran. Mr. Speaker. Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, so, uh, you know, first up, disclosure, I haven't read the book either. Um, but I can... Uh, and I, but I can tell the House that I have actually read tracts of the book, which Family First in their submission helpfully provided um, <laughs> quite large excerpts from the book in their submission to the Select Committee, which I found quite fascinating. And um, anyone who wants to uh, look at, read that submission is welcome to come and ask me. Um, uh, I also didn't sit on the Select Committee. Uh, so, uh, but I have, um, I have had a look at the submissions and I'm looking forward to the committee stages of this bill. Labor supports this bill. Um, I'm going to actually um, uh, stick up for uh, Chris Bishop um, and, uh, on this particular piece of legislation and say that uh, I agree that, you know, that there is a, an important place in this parliament for pieces of, of bills to be put through to correct anomalies in law if they are anomalies that have clearly been shown to have had an impact um, in, out there in society. And I, I think that what we did see with the um, Into the River example is that there was an impact, and it did uh, have the effect of taking a book um, out of circulation for a shortish period of time, but it's still, that's still quite a shocking thing in, in 2017 in New Zealand for an anomaly in the law to have that impact. And, um, and I think, in, um, and Chris Bishop will be also pleased to know that I have read his first reading speech in quite significant detail, um, uh, that um, he gave a couple of examples in that speech of other, um, I think, films that, uh, that had, uh, had been subject to interim restriction orders that meant that they couldn't be shown at a film festival that they were billed to be shown at, and by the time the restriction order was lifted, the film festival had been... Um, uh, had happened, and so it was. Um, it, 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 there was no point. Um, so um, this this bill has got the support of the Labor Party. Uh, it didn't get a lot of submissions, but actually the four submissions I think that it got were actually quite meaty submissions. Um, haven't got a lot of time in this um, second reading speech to go into those details, but would like to raise um, some of those issues in the committee stage. Um, uh, as, and the, um, essentially, this bill really, uh, you know, is very quite simple in what it does, um, and it, um, in effect, um, in, in its clause five, it it's inserts a section into the Act that enables the High Court or a judge to impose what's what's described as a calibrated interim restriction order, where access. Um, can be granted to certain persons or groups of people according to their age, class or purpose for access. What that means is that in, with the Into the River book, it, um, while the um, appeal was being heard by Family First, um, the, um, the, the, that board could have reverted back to a previous classification while it was being um, while it was being heard. I, I hope I'm correct in that. I didn't sit on the select committee, so I don't know all the absolute details. That's not a very big change to the law, but it is a change that corrects this anomaly. Going back to Chris, Re uh, Chris Bishop's um, second reading speech, though, um, and, and he's again referred to the principles of freedom of exp expression um, and the, you know, his, his great libertarian ideals, um, which are great. But in his first reading speech, he, he, talked, he, he actually went a lot further, Mr Speaker, and said that um, what should happen um, it, with this legislation, uh, or, or not this piece of legislation, but what he would like to see happen is actually there be, to be a, a much bigger review of the interim restriction orders. And, and he gave three reasons for this, and I thought they were all quite valid reasons, um, that... that he felt there was a strong case for abolishing them completely. First being the power to the, that, there, that there was, gave too much power to the president of the board, who, had, who was the one that, that essentially meant that, the, um, uh, that this book became um, taken out of circulation, um, that the extraordinary power enjoyed by the president was unnecessary, 
um, that there was, they unjustifiably um, interfered with freedom of expression and that the interim restriction orders can be abused. Now, I actually think that there, that, and I would like to challenge the member actually to, um, to bring another um, uh, private member's bill to the House which actually addresses those issues. Because if he actually seriously believes that, and I think it's probably quite timely because this legislation was written in 1993, it's now 2017, community standards have, have changed, evolved, whatever you want to, to say. Um, and maybe it's time to look at how that board operates, that film classification board, which is the check and balance on the office of the film classification um, office, essentially, which is the censor. Maybe it is time to have a review of that. Maybe it is time to put up a case for um, ta uh, removing the powers for interim restriction orders. Um, uh, and maybe, maybe you know, the, 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 the great freedom of expression ideals that are being espoused by Chris Bishop could, could be put to the test. The question is, though, whether or not his party would actually accept that a as a private member's bill to put forward, or whether it's, it's him just on his soapbox in, in, in a first reading uh, where he knows that actually his party wouldn't actually get behind that. Um, I, I think first principles are actually something that is, you know, if you want to talk about what's important in legislative change, going back to first principles is important. A piece of legislation that was drafted in 1993, that is time. 24 uh, years later is actually a good time to have a, have a good look at it as to whether it's fit for purpose. The other point I want to make, um, Mr Speaker, is around the, um, um, the government. Uh, the legislation that we are dealing with is about how um, classification of content is undertaken. And while this is, you know, and I've given um, a tick to Chris Bishop's efforts, the small anomaly, correction of the anomaly, what this government hasn't addressed is the anomalies, the much, much bigger anomalies that are occurring out there in our community right now in terms of how, ca how content is being classifi classified. We have, um, f uh, we've got broadcast TV content which is classified under the Broadcasting Act and according to a, um, a, a code which is overseen by the Broadcasting Standards Authority. We've got film um, content which is uh, classified by the Census Office, the classif Classification Office, um, and, uh, and they, they provide ratings. And then you've got online content which has no uh, no, no oversight, no um, uh, uh, mediation, no, no ability. And so there's this grey area in our law, in our community standards, and which has not been addressed. In 2015, the government released a discussion paper on convergence, um, and, uh, and, and this was one of the issues that was, was raised. In 2016, um, nearly a year ago, Mr Speaker, the government announced that it was actually going to put forward a piece of legislation um, on to address this anomaly, um, but they also said they were going to do something and they were going to bring it under the, um, under the jurisdiction of the Broadcasting Standards Authority, um, which I don't think had a lot of, there was a lot of um, uh, community outrage about that. But, it, but that piece of draft legislation that we still haven't seen was also going to do something else, which was going to remove restrictions or part remove restrictions on adv Sunday advertising on television. Now, that was controversial because it, and it was a bit mad. Anyway, as I understand it, there is a piece of legislation sitting in the drafting office of the clerk. Um, who knows when it's actually going to appear? But what hasn't happened, Mr Speaker, is that this government has not dealt with these issues, these convergence issues, in after nine years, after nine years, and certainly in the last three years. Now, you would think in 2017 that this government would actually have worked out that it had to do something in this area to appear modern, to appear um, as if it actually understood the difference between broadcast, television, film, online content, or were there differences? And if there weren't, then they all came under the same consistent regime. Well, it hasn't. Who knows when it will? It's, look, it's backward. 
and um, we support this bill, but there are a, there are much bigger issues that the government, not a member, should be dealing with. Sorry, the member's time. Mr. Speaker. <coughs> I call Sarah Dowie. Oh, look, Mr. Speaker.